Hey, in today's video, I'm talking about the truth about protein powders. Do you need protein powders? What's the best protein powder? Is protein powder, getting protein from a protein powder, is that better, more effective than getting whole food based protein? We're gonna cover all of that. We're gonna cover the pros and cons of consuming protein powders. What's the best protein powder for your particular health goals as well? And so when we look at protein powders, right? Big thing that I look at is, are we using that protein powder to increase muscle protein synthesis? For example, are you consuming that protein powder after a workout? Are you trying to increase your overall muscle tissue? And in general, I think that should be one of our main goals when it comes to the way that we eat in general. And I'm a, I'm a fan of a higher protein diet and in particular, getting enough leucine, which is the key branch chain amino acid that has to do with muscle protein synthesis. For most people, they're gonna need two to three grams of leucine per meal in order to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Really depends on your weight, okay? And I've done other videos, other, other reports on you know, the, the leucine levels you need based on your weight. But for the average individual, let's say they need three grams of leucine, average 150 pound person. If you're 125 pounds or less, you might just need two and a half grams or two grams of leucine in a meal. Most proteins are roughly somewhere between eight to 10% leucine. So usually if you're consuming 30 grams of protein in a meal, you're gonna get somewhere between you know, two and a half to three grams of leucine in that meal. For example, eight beef is beef and eggs are 8% leucine. So you consume 30 grams of protein, you know, you're gonna get somewhere around two and a half grams of leucine from that. And so basically that's what you're looking at on a regular basis. You should be looking to get 30 plus grams of protein in a meal. Again, if you're lighter, you might consume a little bit less, 25 or 20 grams of protein in a meal to hit that leucine threshold. Now, when it comes to protein powders, whey protein, which is comes from dairy, dairy has two main proteins, whey and casein. The whey protein itself is really strongly stimulates leucine. It has 11% leucine content. So it's highest in leucine. So it gets, you need less whey protein to reach that muscle protein synthesis threshold. This is why whey protein, I consider the best muscle building protein powder out there. So whey protein is great. Now, a caveat when you're consuming any type of protein powder is that when you process a protein into a powder, it actually becomes more insulogenic, meaning that it increases the insulin produced by your body in order to metabolize it. So if you consume, for example, a steak, and you're eating that steak and you're getting the beef protein from the steak, as opposed to kind of a, a hydrolyzed beef protein, you're gonna have a higher insulin spike with the hydrolyzed beef protein. If you're consuming something like cheese, which has whey protein in it, and then you're consuming whey protein, the whey protein is going to stimulate more insulin. So if you're already dealing with insulin resistance, you don't want huge stimulations. You know, you don't want large stimulations of insulin. So maybe better to do a whole food based diet to get your insulin levels down for a period of time before you were to perhaps add in some level of protein powder. That's always a good idea. And so when we look at other types of protein powders, uh, let's say vegetarian protein sources, pea protein, rice protein, soy protein, hemp protein. These are the most common when it comes to plant-based proteins, all of them roughly about 8% leucine content in them. So pretty much equivalent to the protein sources like egg and beef, okay? Not quite as much as the whey protein. So when it comes to, if your goal is muscle protein synthesis, the best protein powder is whey protein. I recommend getting it from an organic, ideally a grass-fed, like a New Zealand, grass-fed whey protein, uh, which is a common one out there. Um, so you can get a really good quality whey protein. And it also typically has uh, immunoglobulins in it as well, right? So oftentimes they'll put in things like colostrum and there's uh, biopeptides that are in the whey protein. So it can have a lot of great benefits. There's compounds in there, um, for example, like cysteine, which helps increase glutathione levels. So as long as you don't have a dairy allergy, in particular, a whey, whey allergy, a lot of people have dairy allergies or sensitivities, their sensitivity is to the casein component of the dairy protein, not the whey. So as long as you're able to tolerate the whey without 
it increasing inflammation and you know, you're exercising and doing things to get your, keep your insulin down. I think whey protein, a grass fed whey protein is a fantastic protein source to use. It's my favorite protein source to use. My second favorite is a collagen or bone broth protein. Now collagen or bone broth protein have no leucine, right? They don't stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So they're in a different classification. When we consume a collagen or a bone broth protein, we're not actually going to build muscle. We're not going to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. But instead, if they're very rich in glycine, hydroxyproline, and proline, and those are compounds that are very important for gut health, for helping um, with gut integrity, right? Intestinal, um, you know, reducing things like intestinal permeability, right? And helping to improve our immune system. Also very important for joint health, for the collagen in our joints, our skin, our nails. So really good for that. And I, I recommend kind of a combination of using, if you're using protein powders, whey protein is great. And then also using like a bone broth collagen, again, not counting that protein towards stimulating leucine and muscle protein synthesis, but instead getting the other amino acids, the high proline, glycine, the hydroxyproline, the collagen sources. See our ancestors, when they ate an animal, they would eat the collagenous regions, right? So if they had a, you know, a, a, a turkey leg, they would eat all around the joint capsules. So they get a lot of this collagenous protein, or they would boil them and create a bone broth, a broth that was rich in these amino acids. In our society, we just eat muscle meats typically. And so we actually don't get enough of the glycine, the proline, the hydroxyproline. So consuming a collagen or bone broth protein, right? Or even just drinking bone broth can be really helpful for balancing out those amino acids, but it doesn't replace the need for getting enough leucine, the 30 grams of protein that I recommend that we're consuming in each meal. And um, obviously we can get that, that protein from a processed protein powder or from whole food based protein, depending on our health goals and you know how good we do with the insulin stimulation that comes from consuming any sort of uh, powdered processed food like a protein powder. So that's key to remember. Now, what's better when it comes to, you know, different types of plant proteins? It's going to be really dependent upon how your body metabolizes these things. So soy we know has phytoestrogens in it. Definitely don't recommend soy for males, right? There is some research showing that possibly like an organic soy for females can be beneficial. Never get conventional soy. Um, because it's going to be high in pesticides, herbicides, things like that. If you're going to do soy, always get it organic. Uh, for some individuals, they do really poorly with rice protein. Others do fine with it. For some, they do great with a hemp protein or with a pea protein. So find, if you want to use a vegan-based protein, find the one that works best for you. I think you can do great with just a whey protein and a collagen bone broth protein, kind of that combination, if you're using protein powders, right? Again, that comes down to the question. Do you want to use a protein powder or you just want to get your protein from whole food based sources? But if you're going to get a protein powder, you know, I really like whey protein. I really like collagen bone broth protein. Plant based proteins are fine, especially if you're, if you're sensitive to the whey, then I could see for sure using either an egg protein, if you're, if you're able to tolerate egg or a beef protein or using a pea protein, hemp protein, rice protein in order to get the leucine levels, the leucine content that you need. Now, rice protein itself is not a complete protein. So you'll see it oftentimes mixed with like a pea protein or a hemp protein or something like that to create the complete protein and to get enough of the branched chain amino acids. So you'll see that as well. Um, and that's, that's something to remember with plant proteins, always as much as possible, getting them organic, I think is, you know, a really good idea. And a lot of times what you'll see on certain formulas, especially if they're medical grade formulas, is they'll actually add in a whole bunch of amino acids. So they'll actually add in additional amino acids in order to get the leucine levels up perhaps, or to get glutamine levels up. Glutamine we know is really good for helping heal and seal the gut. So for some medical based formulas, you will, that, that, that practitioners are using, they'll actually add in additional ingredients, different things that perhaps help with liver detoxification, different amino acids that help support and heal the gut that help to support lean body tissue. So there are a number of different formulas out there. Again, there's these medical grade formulas, there's whey protein, plant proteins, collagen bone broth proteins, and uh, they're gonna have, have different unique benefits to each of them. <music>